On day one, I spawned into a jungle kingdom as a baby tiger. Massive airships began to fly over my home, dropping explosives in their wake. Everything around me was consumed in flames. What's going on? Enemies rained down from the ships and terrorized my people with their immense strength. Tigers ran in horror as they swarmed the city. Just then, my older brother, Fang, dropped down into the city. Our father was never fit to rule this world. I'm taking what's rightfully mine. Not so fast. Out of nowhere, my dad arrived with his army forces and confronted my big brother. Fang charged into the fight with the force of his army as people were slain left and right. My dad unleashed a flurry of fiery blows upon Fang, but my brother was far too fast. Unfortunately, it was clear that my dad's men were losing. I watched in horror as my father began to get overpowered by Fang. I had to help somehow, so I rushed to his side. Bronzo, protect our home! With his dying breath, he tossed over his war gauntlet and was slain by his own son. No! Using the weapon my dad had given me suddenly made my body begin to change. I stood on two paws and became endowed in shining golden armor. Fire blazed on my body and I gained five more hearts. I was now a war tiger. Get him, man. I braced myself as my brother's forces came after me. On day two, I was faced with the might of an entire army. Luckily, I had my new gauntlets to defend myself. A stampede of fiery eyed tigers quickly rushed at me. As I ran, I attacked with my new gauntlet claws, giving me the opportunity to weave between the tigers. They chased me around the base, but with my new transformation, my speed allowed me to escape their attacks, keeping a good distance from my opponents. I was stronger now than before and managed to injure a few of the goons with my powerful claws. Unfortunately, they were heavily armed, which gave them a powerful edge over me. I can't hold them off anymore. I had no choice but to run as the tiger army chased close behind. They rained down from the sky, ready to kill me, no matter what twist or turn I made. Thanks to their airships, they know my every move. The airships continued their onslaught, dropping explosives down onto me as I ran. I did my best to evade the attacks, but I messed up and took a heavy hit, leaving me with low health. I ran inside a building to avoid the barrage and found a secret underground passage within. With Fang's forces closing in on all sides, I had nowhere else to run. Here goes nothing. I hopped into the chasm and plummeted into the darkness below. On day three, I landed inside of the underground cavern to find it lit with glowing gems. I thought my leap of faith was enough to protect me, but I watched as Fang's men jumped down into the hole too. I was once again trapped in a bad situation. I guess this is the end. Suddenly, the army ran away from me. Huh? I turned around and realized I had awoken a giant spider. Enraged, the monster lunged at me, ready to make me his next meal. The giant spider began spewing venom and acid breath, stinging my tiger skin all over. I fought back with the gauntlet that my dad had given me, using its power to deliver some ferocious punches to the spider's eyes. The spider bit with its massive fangs, but I retaliated with a few charged up punches that sent the spider flying backwards. The powers of the gauntlet were amazing, but I was quickly running out of stamina as the spider sprayed me with white webbing. I was getting exhausted. My golden war tiger armor kept me safe for the most part, but the giant arachnid was relentless with its attacks. I was too weak from the previous battle to stand a chance. He was far too strong for me in my current state. My back was up against a wall, and there was nowhere to turn. The beast charged at me full speed, and I moved just in time to evade the attack. He smashed into the wall, revealing a new path that had been hidden. There's a way out! I ran through the passage as the beast continued to pursue me close behind. On days four through five, I made it to the other side of the passage to find myself in one of Fang's bases. It was crawling with his men that were prepping for battle. Halt or we will charge. Bring it on! I jumped out of the way as the massive spider barreled into the charging enemies. He gnashed his teeth at Fang's men and they retaliated with their claws. The two forces fought against Against each other, buying me some time to escape. I found my way back to the surface, but to my horror, I found more of the enemy forces waiting. Nice try. 
But Fang isn't gonna let you stir up trouble. I'm not going down without a fight. The commander held his blade close while smoldering bits of magma were released from his body. He raised his sword and swung in my direction and performed a whirling series of fiery slashes while his men watched him take care of business. I tried my best to dodge and weave through the chaos of the battlefield while trying to take down the forces with my war gauntlets. He was heavily armored and difficult to overcome. I quickly realized the power of my brother's army was too much to take on alone. I gotta make a break for it or I'm dead. I found an opening and climbed up the mountain to escape the heavily armed forces. Oh no you don't. The commander charged in as I made it to the edge of a cliff. I had nowhere to run and he knocked me backwards, sending me off the edge towards my doom. On day six through seven, I was plummeting towards the earth, but I managed to land in water, breaking my fall. Those guys are crazy powerful. Suddenly, I heard footsteps approaching and ducked down into a nearby cave. To my surprise, the commander was still looking for me. I know you're around here somewhere. I moved deeper into the cave and stayed hidden as the commander patrolled the area. I knew getting caught by him would be a death sentence. I was going to have to stealth my way out of this one. I walked carefully from hiding spot to hiding spot. Unfortunately, I wasn't careful enough. I accidentally stepped onto some loose rocks and alerted the commander. There you are. The hulking man chased after me, and I ran as fast as I could out of the cave when I spotted a village of frost copper golems. I gotta hide. I took cover inside of the peaceful village as the commander caught up to me. Men, level this pathetic village and find Bronzo. Like clockwork, the area was swarmed by Fang's men. On days eight through nine, the village of Golems were under attack by my brother's evil forces. The entities tried their best to defend their home, but they were no match for the elite fighters. The innocent people fell one by one to the might of my brother's army as they searched for me. This is all my fault. I have to help them. I found some food in a chest and quickly healed up before jumping back into the fray. If you guys want me, come and get me. The guards all came up to me and I prepared to fight. They pounced onto me and I could only just barely dodge. More of Fang's soldiers joined the fray. I was able to take down the lesser goons with my trusty gauntlets, but the commander soon set his sights on me too. The two of us clashed in glorious battle, but I wasn't able to stand up to him. A few hits left me once again with low health. And he lost words. As I was about to accept my fate, the giant spider from before jumped out of nowhere. The beast stormed the village, causing Fang's men to retreat. I couldn't let the monster level the village, but I had an idea. Hey, big guy, come and get me. I ran off as the beast chased me in a blind fury. I was soon cornered at the edge of a deep chasm, and the beast knocked me over, sending me falling inside. On days 10 through 11, I landed inside of a gold-covered cavern as the massive beast dropped down below me. Won't you just give up? I ran through the cavern as the monster chased me through the narrow passages. I couldn't seem to shake it off my tail, and I knew I was too weak to fight it alone. I was going to have to think of something fast. I fled into a room and used my gauntlet claws to knock down rubble, sealing the beast off from the entrance. I don't think that'll hold him for long. I continued into the cave until suddenly the commander dropped down in front of me. Nowhere to run. Prepare yourself. On days 12 through 14, I was facing off with the commander of Fang's troops. The commander began by shooting his missiles at me, dwindling my health bit by bit. He then flew towards me, trying to attack with his steaming hot blade. But luckily, I was able to evade his attack. I ran at my opponent to get in close to hit him with my gauntlet claws. I landed my strike right in his metal core, dealing minimal damage. The commander still came at me with his powerful magma blocks that he summoned from the ground, arming his massive flamethrower, he sent waves of fire flying in my direction. Even without his army to back him up, the commander was a tough foe. At this rate, I was going to get crushed. I got knocked down to low health and knew one more hit would be the end of me. Dad, I'm sorry. Suddenly, the frost copper golems from the village I had saved ran into the cavern to help me. They began to fight off the commander and I couldn't let them do it alone. I jumped back into the battle. The commander tried to fight back the golems, but they were 
able to overwhelm him. I used the gauntlet my dad gave me to its full potential, repeatedly striking the commander and sending shockwaves through his armor. The golems continued to swarm his legs, giving me plenty of openings for devastating blows. I could tell the commander wouldn't be able to go on for much longer. With their help, we managed to defeat the commander once and for all. The fury of war burned brighter inside me, causing my body to change. I grew bigger in size and gained even more powerful armor. The flames on my body grew brighter and my claws were sharper. I was now an adult war tiger with a new power. If I want any chance of winning this war, then I need to build my own army. Suddenly, the cavern began to explode all around us as the airships dropped more explosives from the sky above. This way! I followed my new recruits the way they came in hopes of escaping the war ground. On days 15 to 17, I followed my army of golems as explosives rained from the skies above. Take cover! Over there! I spotted a cave, and together, we tried to protect ourselves from the falling explosives. Suddenly, I heard a menacing growl come from behind me. Is that a... Before I could react, a wolf dragged one of my men away. What? Left and right, wolves began abducting my army. I couldn't react fast enough. Stop! Go away now! Before I knew it, one wolf got the jump on me, and I blacked out! I woke up with a throbbing headache, and I was locked in a cage, separate from my army, who were in another cage. You'll be a perfect meal for our leader. You think so? I quickly broke open the cage with my new power, and stepped forward to stand my ground. You should all be submitting to me, and joining my army. You tell him, Bronzo. No, our leader is far stronger than you. Attack! Just then, the wolf pack attacked. They swarmed around me, jumping and biting me non-stop. I fought back as best I could, using my new abilities to swing at them, my fists blazing with power. On days 18 to 20, I was fighting with the pack. I thought I was actually winning, until a massive wolf stepped forward. Enough! The rest of the wolves backed off immediately. Everyone stood in silence, waiting for the alpha wolf to speak his next words. Very well, War Tiger. Complete the full moon trials and you may become our alpha. Fail and we'll eat you and your entire army. Bring it on. I was then taken to the first trial. I had to platform over a pit of boiling magma. I had two choices, succeed or plummet and let my entire army down. And I wasn't going to let them down. The full moon hung heavy over my head in the sky as I jumped from platform to platform. Everything was going well until I made it to the end. It was one final large jump. It looked impossible. I honed all my strength and took a leap of faith. I barely made it and passed trial one. Let's go! I did it! Only the first trial. Let us move on. The second trial is to go on a hunt for the colony. Hunt? For your colony? Why would I do that? Remember who holds the fate of your people. Right. I'll be off now. I was sent off into the forest to do their hunting. I killed a few animals for their meat, and everything seemed to be going fine until I heard some heavy footsteps. I turned around and spotted a massive mutant plant. Before I could react, it attacked me. The mutant had a powerful bite, and if it couldn't reach me with its mouth, it would reach me with its fists. My punches launched it into the air before slamming it back down into the earth. Despite the punches, it kept on fighting until I could see it beginning to grow weak. Finally, I defeated the mutant nightmare and came out completing another trial. Just then, the alpha wolf appeared. I see you have defeated the mutant. Let us move on to trial three. The alpha wolf then took me back to his camp for the final trial. So, what's trial three? Defeating the current leader, me. Without another moment, the alpha wolf lunged at me. On days 21 to 23, I was battling the Alpha Wolf in hopes of recruiting the pack to my cause. What's the matter? Can't handle the big bad wolf? Yeah, right. I'm not done yet. The Alpha was much stronger than the rest of his pack, and it was going to take a lot to beat him. I struck at him again and again, hoping one of the blows would be enough to take him down. He would shoot electricity at me and cause lightning to fall from the sky. There must have been something in his mechanical gears that could cause all of this electricity. Though this wolf was tough, I managed to overpower him and take him down. Surrender your pack and join my army. Ha 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 ha. 
<laughs> Suddenly, the alpha wolf transformed into a massive shadow wolf. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? What? No fair! How? The power of the full moon. I've harnessed it for my taking. I could sense his power surging through him. I wasn't sure if I could win, but I knew I had to try. Do you surrender? Never! Without another word, I charged in for round two. On days 24 to 26, I was battling out with the empowered Alpha Shadow Wolf. His new form towered over me, and he leapt into the air, spinning before hitting the ground right in front of me. He now carried a massive shadowy blade, which he swung at me relentlessly. My punches seemed weak in comparison to such a beast, but I couldn't give up now. He used the darkness of the full blood moon to his advantage, and it was overpowering me. Fool, as long as the full moon casts its light you will never win then it's time to light this place up through sure will i was able to gain a flame power and i began setting the entire landscape ablaze the light from the fire began to weaken the power of the shadow wolf what don't like a little light why you immediately the alpha wolf became weaker and he roared in frustration trying to swing at me but his attacks were far less powerful than before i figured all i would need was a few more good hits and he would be beaten i managed to win the battle defeating him once and for all around me the other wolves witnessed his downfall all hail the new alpha oh. The wolves then took me back to my friends, who had been set free, and I was reunited with them. Welcome to my army, everyone! Though right when everything seemed peaceful, trouble came! There's the war tiger! Get him! On days 27 to 29, Thang's army attacked me, but my new wolf pack came to my aid. You want some of me? You'll have to go through my army. My crew snapped at Fang's gang and put up a decent fight. The wolves were gnashing their teeth as they bit at the tigers, who retaliated by swiping their razor-sharp claws. The beasts clashed around me, and I entered the fray. Using my ground slam to shake them up, I assaulted the tiger foes, releasing a ferocious barrage of punches fighting them off and defending my wolf allies. As more swarmed us, I unleashed my uppercut attack, devastating all who were in the way of my fists. During the battle, one of the goons dropped a map titled Next Raid. I knew I had to investigate this map further, but I couldn't in the heat of the battle. So I came up with a better idea. Hold these guys off. I'm going to check this out. I left my army behind, knowing they could handle the fight, and followed the map to see what was waiting for me. After a bit of traveling, I arrived at a village, completely in ruin. What happened here? As I investigated, I was ambushed by more of Fang's men. It was a trap. I was bombarded by the white tigers from all directions. I quickly got my senses together and began using what I knew best. The tigers were not deterred by my vicious attacks. They kept coming at me with numbers I've never seen before. It felt like an endless nightmare. I can't hold on much longer. Not so fast. Suddenly, a massive monkey warrior jumped into the fray to help me. I had never seen moves like the monkey was betraying. He used his staff to knock the tigers back and create distance so he could then strike them down with a critical blow. The tigers kept coming, wanting to destroy the mysterious monkey warrior, but he was determined to defeat them. He flipped into the air and grand slammed, creating a ripple around him and dealing tons of damage. I quickly jumped in to aid him and used my elemental punches to finish finish off the rest of the foul tigers. I had to know who was fighting by my side, so I asked, Who are you? The name's Wu. Don't wear it out. Wu and I continued to fight, and eventually we killed all of Fang's goons. Just when we thought we had this battle in the bag, a mysterious figure appeared. Enough of this! One good look at him, and I could tell he was the commander. You're going down. On days 30 to 32, Wu and I were locked in combat with the commander. His armor was unlike any other. It was unbreakable, and both Wu and I didn't stand a chance. The commander kept shooting missile after missile, bullet after bullet. He was the best gunner anyone has ever seen. His explosions were too much for even the both of us to handle. Sorry, friend. You're on your own with this one. The monkey fled, leaving me to die. Wait, come back. Before I could say another word, I was knocked out cold by the commander's might. Nah, nah. 
The next thing I knew, I woke up inside of a cell with the other prisoners from the destroyed village. Pain will be here soon to retrieve y'all. <laughs> the commander then left the area. I felt helpless at this moment, but just then, Wu dropped down. You came back! Of course, sometimes you have to wait for the right moment to strike. With a swift attack, he freed me and his allies from the cage, but very quickly the alarms began to blare. There isn't time. I'll lead my men to safety. Meet me at the Temple of the East. You got it! Without further hesitation, I fled and parted ways with Wu. On days 33 to 35, I found a way to escape the prison as the alarm sounded around me. Suddenly, mechanical insects began to pursue me. Bang's tech is improving more and more by the day. I tried to outrun them, but they were waiting around every corner as if they knew my next move. I looked around and realized this place was littered with cameras. As long as they can use those, I'm never safe. I searched for a way to shut off the cameras and found the main control panel. I used my powers to destroy the machinery, causing the insects to lose sight of me. Now's my chance. I found an exit and escaped the prison. I better head east before those bug brains catch up. Eventually, I found the temple where Wu was, already waiting for me. It's good to see you made it out alive. Thanks to you. Please consider joining my cause. We need to win this war and stop my brother. Me and my men will, if you can prove yourself. Just then, Wu leapt at me with determination. On days 36 to 38, I began to deal with Wu. He was a skilled warrior and put my battle knowledge to the test. Wu immediately unleashed a powerful backflip attack, catching me off guard. He followed up by unleashing a fire blast from his staff, and I retaliated with a quick uppercut. Before dodging away, he followed close and let loose with a ground slam, causing serious damage. But I retaliated with a flurry of punches. He used a spinning staff attack to try to get some breathing room, so I dodged back to avoid it before re-engaging with my own Grand Slam. He was strong and put up a good fight, but I was stronger. Though a vigorous fight, I managed to defeat Wu. You are worthy. Please take this weapon. Me and my people will serve you as allies. He handed me a mysterious samurai sword. I grabbed it, and when I wielded it, I transformed into my final War Tiger phase. I had five more hearts and new powers to use in my arsenal. Let's see Feng stop me now. Gladly! Suddenly, the commander from earlier arrived. Stand back! I got this one. Wu and the commander duked it out. It was a very close and intense fight. I had no idea who would come out on top. Wu again unleashed his backflip attack, but it did little to affect the commander. He followed up with his spinning staff attack, but the commander didn't even flinch. Rockets began flying, exploding all around the temple, shattering the floor and sending Wu flying back. Despite their injuries, Wu charged back in, attacking with his fire staff. But again, it proved to be fruitless. The commander continued to unleash a seemingly unending missile barrage, relentless in his attack. Wu did his best, striking with his ground slam, but doing nothing to stop the commander's attacks. Please, Bronzo, protect my people and win this war. With his final words, Wu died. Wu, no, you'll pay for this. I jumped at the commander in a blind rage. On days 39 to 41, I fought the commander. I knew it would be my toughest battle yet. However, I had my samurai sword to back myself up now. The commander assaulted me with powerful robot punches and I let loose with my own powerful explosive fire punch, setting him ablaze. He retaliated using his machine gun hands to pepper me with bullets as I dodged around him. Having moved farther away, he switched tactics and began unleashing with his missile barrage. So I returned fire by blasting him with my flamethrower. I dashed in for a katana strike, slicing at him when I saw an opening. He shot at me again, and I dodged out of the way, striking him with a flurry of punches as I moved. I began a whirlwind of slashes, slicing at him furiously as the blade effortlessly cut through his armor. This is for Wu! I struck him down, winning the battle. Upon his death, he dropped a letter with some interesting material. At sunset, we will be taking over the seas. That sounds bad. I need to get to the ocean now. I told my new recruits to meet up with my army and head out to the oceans. I arrived just as the sun was setting, but nothing seemed to be happening. Hello, brother. 
I looked up, only to see a fleet of airships fly overhead. It was another trap! On days 42 to 44, I was face to face with my older brother, Fang. Are you ready to surrender? I will never surrender to you, after what you did to our father. Ha! Huh, do you really think you can defeat me? You are the smallest cub in the pack. You don't stand a chance. That may be true, but I'm just as much of a war tiger as you are. We'll see about that once you're put into the ground, just like our father. Without another word, Fang attacked me. I charged back, striking him with my fire punches. He seemed completely unfazed and attacked by unleashing a plasma blast of his own, igniting me. We continued dodging around each other, fire and plasma spewing across the battlefield, setting the ground on fire. Our fists met each other's bodies as we landed blow after blow in an epic slugfest. The airships were bombarding the area with explosive rounds, devastating the landscape and causing severe damage. I continued the fight regardless, switching tactics and using my samurai sword to create a flurry of blade slices as I did my best to avoid Fang's damaging attacks. Dashing in and out of his rage, I attacked desperately to land any hits I could as the world exploded around me. Between him and the airships, I was no match against their might. With nowhere else to go, I fled into the water. I hate you, brother! I thought I was safe until explosives began plunging into the ocean. I tried to evade them while holding my breath, but as I did, I suddenly got sucked down into a whirlpool. I realized I had swam over magma blocks. I tried to fight the current, but I couldn't break free. After a few moments of despair, I passed out. On days 45 to 47, I woke up on a boat in the middle of the ocean. I looked around and realized that I was surrounded by a crew of pirates and a fleet of ships. Uh, where am I? Ahoy, lad. You were drowning, so we saved you. Before I could respond, the ship began to rock violently. What's going on? Looking around, I saw that there was an incoming fleet of enemy ships. Looks like we have company. Mateys, to your battle stations. In seconds, war broke out between the ship's crews. They began pelting one another with cannonballs, causing explosions as far as the eye could see. The pirates I was with had just saved me, so I figured the best thing I could do was try to help them out. Using my own powers, I tried to hit the enemy ships and cause some kind of damage. It worked a bit, but their numbers were large, and each ship had a thick hull, not to mention that the enemy's main ship was simply too powerful to take down. There was only one way to defeat it. I've got to break it from the inside. While my new allies continued to fight the fleet, I started my invasion on the main ship. On days 48 to 50, I washed up aboard the enemy ship, only to find their captain waiting for me. If it isn't Fang's little brother, looks like it's me lucky day. You work for Fang? Then you're going down. The captain summoned phantom tentacles to attack me, reaching out from the deck and swatting at me when I got too close. I fought back, using my flamethrower attack to ignite him, letting the fire do its work. I continued my assault, letting loose with a quick barrage of sword strikes to whittle the captain's health down. He dodged across the deck, attempting to weave between my attacks while slashing at me with his own wicked sword. I was able to dodge away easily, then quickly re-engage with my trusty sword dash attack. I was eager to finish the fight as quickly as possible. I brought the captain to his knees, but all he did was began to laugh hysterically. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny? In a few days, Fang is going to unleash a massive attack just north of here. Your forces won't stand. Chance. We won't go down that easy. I had enough, and with one last attack, I slayed the captain. Looks like I'm having calamari for dinner. Next, I used my fire abilities and burned down his ship without regret. Finally, I returned with the original pirates, and they rejoiced. Thank you for your help. We'll happily serve you in the war against Fang. Take this. They handed me a map titled Treasure. This will take you to a place that holds loads of armor and weapons. This will be perfect to prepare for the upcoming battle. I better make haste. On days 51 to 53, I followed the map to find an island, but nothing seemed to be around it. I investigated it and accidentally set off a pitfall trap. The sand opened beneath my feet and fell into a strange building. This must be the treasure I was looking for. I explored the forgotten halls and suddenly I heard some scuttling feet. Who's there? Just then, there was a horde of venom spiders and infested swarmers crawling straight toward me. I was swarmed by the insects. I tried to fight them back with my flamethrower attack, but they were just too fast. Before I knew it, they were right 
right on top of me. I lashed out with my sword, but I needed something substantial. I started using my slam attack, smashing the bugs madly as they continued to race towards me. They started biting at me and shooting venom from rage. I tried to dodge them, but the horde was never ending. I squashed them left and right, but one of them bit me. Very quickly, my vision began to get fuzzy. Are these guys venomous? Before another moment, I passed out. On days 54 to 56, I was in some kind of dream. I was in a strange void. There, in front of me, was my dad. Dad? Where am I? Ronzo, you are dreaming. You cannot lose this upcoming battle at any cost. The things Fang plans to do to this realm are unfathomable. How do I win? He's always stronger than me. You have something he doesn't. My blessing. Protect this realm and honor my death. Suddenly, the area burst into flames. I ran towards my dad, but the fire consumed him. Win at any cost, son. Just then, he vanished. I suddenly woke up. I had five more hearts and a new power. Something had woken up inside of me. I quickly got back on track and slayed the remainder of the bugs and continued forwards. I made it to the treasure room where I claimed plenty of armor and weapons for my allies. This was it. Bang is going to pay for his crimes. On days 57 to 59, I arrived at the location that the fallen captain told me about. My army was waiting for me there, and I handed them all the weapons and gear I had retrieved. Let's avenge my father! Abruptly, Fang's men began to walk forward. They were a mix of the same men from before, as well as the robotic insects I had faced. Charge! The two armies met each other with incredible force. The robots shot explosives and lasers that ate through my army's defenses, knocking back soldiers in order to gain ground. My army retaliated with no mercy. The golems punched with their iron and copper fists, crushing the robots' metal hides. The sloths and ferrets trained by Wu were intense warriors, leaping forward fearlessly and clawing at any weakness they could target. I also was in the fray, using my katana, martial arts abilities, and flamethrower. It seemed we were just about neck and neck until out of the blue, more of the massive mechs were deployed onto the midst of the battle. What is that? He must have made more. Eliminate, must eliminate. The mechs began to rain fire down on the army, causing us devastating losses. Its strength was almost incomprehensible as it stomped and wreaked havoc. It was able to defeat large numbers in mere moments, and my army was starting to lose. As I was battling the mechs, none other than Fang dropped down in the distance. I let my army handle the mechs, and I approached Fang. Time to end this. On days 60 to 62, my army was being overwhelmed by Fang's modernized forces. Meanwhile, I was standing face to face with my brother. Without any hesitation, Fang lunged towards me. As soon as he moved, I began slashing at him, but Fang was prepared. His fiery attack set my body ablaze, making it hard to see and even more difficult to defend myself. He never let up even once, and I knew he would stop at nothing to defeat me. I would have to be just as determined if I wanted to beat him, but Fang's attacks were ruthless, and as the fight continued, I was beginning to realize that I didn't stand a chance against him. Fang backed me up to the edge of a cliff. No, my men will support me. What men? As he spoke, I realized Fang's men had captured my army in a large cage. Fang took a menacing step closer to me. You have nothing left. Long live the War King. No! Without another word, Fang knocked me off the edge of the cliff and sent me plummeting towards the ground below. On days 63 to 66, I was falling towards my doom when suddenly a bunch of water appeared under me, breaking my fall. What? Men, after him. Fang's goons jumped off the cliff and swam at me. Come on then, bring it on. Suddenly, a massive turtle came out of the water. Come with me. I followed the turtle as the evil forces tailed behind the two of us. To my surprise, the turtle blasted them with a powerful magic, buying us more time. Come on, let's keep going. Eventually, we both escaped to an island. Who are you? I am an old nature spirit, and I need your help to overpower Fang's machines. If you don't, it will mean disaster for the world as we know it. But how do I do that? They're too strong. Find the three essence of nature and return them to me. Suddenly, the goons from before returned. 
Go. I'll hold them off. I left quickly while the turtle held them off. On days 67 to 70, I arrived on another island to find an enormous factory sitting on it. I investigated further. After sneaking into the building and looking around, I found sea creatures being held captive in tanks. They were being used to power machinery. This has to be the work of Fang. There was no way they weren't suffering. In no world would I leave these creatures to die. I quickly ran in to try and save them. Before I could get too far, I got spotted by a robot guard. That's not good. Despite its small size, the robot guard packed a nasty punch. It shot multiple lasers at me out of cannons on its body and lasers blasting through the sky and cutting through anything in its way. When it wasn't shooting lasers at me, it used its mechanical legs to scurry close to me to attack. It took some effort, but I managed to fight off the robot guard and make my way over to the tanks. I smashed open the enclosure, freeing the sea creatures. Run! Huh? Suddenly, I heard beeping from all around. I looked for the source of the sound, and then I realized, uh-oh, this place is gonna self-destruct. Everyone out! I tried to run away, but I was too slow and got caught in the explosion. The last thing I saw was the smoke before I suddenly blacked out. On days 71 to 74, I woke up underwater and saw a faint glow in front of me. What's that? I swam towards it to find the first nature essence, the essence of the sea. Just as I was about to grab it, a sea monster attacked me. You're not getting your gritty claws on that war tiger. No, I'm a good guy. Liar! Without another beat, the sea monster swam towards me. They were quick under the water, and his jaws were powerful. He would bite at me, then swim away, before circling back to another attack. His massive size meant he could push me around as well, causing me to struggle to hit him. He definitely had the advantage here. Under the water, I couldn't hold my breath forever. I was gonna drown this time for good. Leave him alone! Just then, my new aquatic allies came to my aid. They bought me time to grab the essence, granting me water breathing. The next essence is on land. Hurry! Thanks for everything. Welcome to the team. With that, I swam away. On days 75 to 77, I arrived back to the shore where I found the next factory. Instead of barging in like the last time, I decided to try and sneak my way over as quickly as possible and listen for intel. I was careful and eventually got close enough to be able to hear two guards talking to each other. Did you make sure to lock down the land essence? Sure did. With its power, we can use our machines with ease. I bet you Fang will be pleased. Excellent. We'll assemble so many robot insects that his little brother won't even know what hit him. That sounds bad. I need to shut this place down and claim that essence for myself. Suddenly, one of the guards looked over. Who goes there? Uh-oh. I tried to run, but I was immediately stopped by a swarm of robot insects. They shot projectiles of all shapes and sizes up at me and only paused to reload before continuing their assault. These robot insects were small, but when they worked together like this, they were powerful. Although I was definitely strong enough to defeat them now, more and more insects kept pouring out of the manufacturing line. I had no choice but to run deeper into the facility to try and flee the insects. On days 78 to 80, I arrived at the main control room. As soon as I set foot in there, I was getting attacked by robot insects. Before me, I could see land creatures trapped in cages. They must have been harnessing the power of the land essence to turn these innocent creatures into robot insects. I knew I had to do something. This this ends now. I dashed towards the control panel, but the robot insects blocked my path. I knew I couldn't take on all the robot insects on my own. I would have to try a different strategy in order to win. I ran towards the cages, doing my best to free as many land creatures as possible before the robot insects could overtake me. Attack! Just as I had hoped, the newly freed land creatures fought off the robot insects while I went for the panel. Now's my chance. I shut off the control panels one by one and the robot insects began to die. Finally, I was able to claim the land essence and felt myself growing stronger. Thank you, War Tiger. We will fight by your side. Awesome. You will make my army even greater. My celebration didn't last long, as out of nowhere, I was hit by some sort of strange projectile. Before I knew it, I was floating up in the air. On days 81 to 82, I was floating higher and higher into the sky. I knew a drop from this height would kill me. What's going on? The levitation effect wore off, and I started to fall down. Luckily, I landed on a soft cloud. I was now in the sky. Who brought me here? Suddenly, the sky grew dark and a sky serpent appeared before me. You will not claim the fire essence. 
The serpent flew full force at me, sending spiraling stars in my direction. The moment they hit me, I was blinded. I knew I couldn't reach them with my normal attacks, so I started shooting flamethrowers wildly, hoping to hit it despite not seeing them. This was far from a fair fight. The beast was born in the sky, and it had me cornered on a cloud, hundreds of feet up in the sky. I was out of my element, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me. As it gained confidence and drew closer to me, I took the opportunity to draw my katana and start slashing. They were tough, but I managed to win. But to my surprise, I got knocked off the cloud in the process. I plummeted towards my doom, hoping to be saved once more. On days 83 to 84, I was still falling to my demise, when suddenly a sky creature swooped in and placed water on the ground before I would die from fall damage. Oh, thank you. Who, who are you? I am a sky spirit. I've been watching your journey, and you have proven you are not like your evil brother. The creatures of the sky will happily serve your cause. Thank you, but everything is hopeless if I can't find the final essence. Are you sure about that? They handed me the third and final essence, the essence of the sky. Just like that, I got the no fall damage buff. I got all three! Thank you! Time to return to the ancient turtle! I headed back to where the turtle was and presented him with all of the essences. You have tapped into nature and saved its creatures, but you have one final test before I can give you your prize. Defeat me in a duel! I won't hold back! We both charged in without a moment to prepare! On days 85 to 86, I was facing off with the ancient turtle in a duel to complete my final test. The ancient turtle was slow, but his attacks were strong. He summoned the water around him to strike at me, shooting forceful blasts of water directly at me, making it hard to see. Throughout the fight, he called for the aid of small, spiny sea urchins to help him fight. He even created a tsunami with waves large enough to completely knock me over. Just as I expected, the ancient turtle was a powerful opponent, but I wasn't going to give up. I pushed myself just enough to strike him down, winning the duel. Excellent work, War Tiger. You are worthy of this artifact. The ancient turtle handed me the great artifact of nature. Wow, thank you. As soon as I touched the artifact, I felt my own powers growing, and I gained five hearts. Not only was I more powerful, but my forces had grown over the course of my journey as I freed various creatures and recruited them to my cause. Now that I've gotten stronger, I need to save my captive forces from the claws of Fang. Take this. The ancient turtle handed handed me a map to a high-tech prison. It must have been where my forces were being held. This jailbreak won't be easy, but with your strength, you can overcome it. Thanks! It's time to get my men back. On days 87 to 88, I followed the map and found myself at a sprawling prison. I knew my forces were being held captive somewhere inside of those massive walls. If I want to get in there, I'll have to use everything I have. I was quickly met with my first obstacle, a giant moat. I'm not going to let a little bit of water stop me. I dove in, and before I knew it, I was being swarmed by a pack of piranhas. I knew what I would have to do to get past them. Men, attack! At my command, my aquatic allies swam in, fighting off the piranhas. While my allies were keeping busy with the sharp toothed fish, I swam forward and was able to make it to the other side with no problem. Carefully, I walked inside of the prison and spotted a guard headed my way. Just before he could notice me, I ducked into cover, narrowly avoiding the guard. I'll have to be careful. One look at me will send this entire facility into high alert. Alert. On days 89 to 90, I was sneaking through the facility in search of my captive allies. I had a few close calls, but I stumbled upon an important looking entrance where two guards were talking. Did you lock up Brodzo's allies inside? Yes. They won't be in there much longer though. I heard that the boss is planning to finally execute them in the next few days. It's about time. I'm tired of watching over this door. Execute? I have to find them before that happens. Suddenly, another guard spotted me from behind. Intruder! Naturally, I was attacked as they tried to capture me. I didn't have time for the guards. I had to get back to my friends before it was too late. Just then, my land allies arrived. Go ahead! We got this! Thanks, guys! They started attacking all of Fang's goons, giving me time to escape. So I ran deeper into the facility in search of my imprisoned friends. On days 91 to 92, I arrived inside of a large room and found my allies contained inside a massive cage. Don't worry, I'm coming! No! Wait! 
I confidently stepped forward to save them, but it was a trap. As soon as I did, the cage vanished in a puff of magic, and an ender warrior appeared right in front of me. You walked right into my hands. Where did you teleport my allies? Somewhere you'll never find them. Suddenly, the ender warrior charged towards me. The creature slammed its weapons into the ground, and sparks of bright purple energy erupted from them. Each time it slashed downwards, it sent the same energy whirling towards me. With two blades in hand, it circled around me, taking every opportunity to strike. I was so close to saving my allies. I knew I couldn't lose them now. I summoned up all the strength I had and defeated the Ender Warrior. Upon his death, I noticed he left something behind, and I quickly picked it up. Huh, looks like a map to another base and a potion of levitation. I didn't have time to look at the map for too long as I suddenly heard footsteps approaching. I had no choice but to flee the prison and I managed to escape just in time. On days 93 to 94, I arrived at the location on the map and found a massive airship in the sky. They must be on that ship, but how do I get aboard? Just then, I remembered I had a potion of levitation. I used it and felt myself start to float upwards. As I flew, I got attacked by a wind caller. Where did you come from? The wind callers swarmed me midair, attacking me from all sides. Their attacks cut the air with such force that they bit at my tough hide. On top of that, their stacked numbers made it hard to maneuver. Every time I fought a few off, more seemed to take their place. But the clock was ticking, and I had no better option than to power through every one of them before I fell. After a lot of fighting, I defeated them just in time, and I landed on the airship just as my potion wore off. There, on the airship, I found my allies, still locked up in their cage, but looking relieved to see me. You came back for us! Of course! A general is nothing without his army. If we're gonna win this war, I need your help! Very touchy, but I'm gonna have to break up your little reunion. I turned around and found a guard standing right behind me. Before I could say anything, they landed a heavy blow on me, and I blacked out. On days 95 to 96, I found myself back in the dream realm with my dad. Father, I failed the last battle. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, son. You're closer now than ever to unlocking the true strength of a war tiger. What do you mean? You know the worth of your army and nature itself. This is something your brother will never understand. How does that help me on my journey? I will show you. He presented an endless pearl to me. I was bathed in mystic light. Grab this artifact and embrace your power. You are a mighty war tiger. I grabbed the endless pearl and I felt stronger than ever. I could feel that I was now resistant to fire. Thanks, dad. I won't let you down. On days 97 to 98, I woke up to find myself trapped in a cage. I quickly realized my allies and I were about to be executed by Fang's guards. But just then, I remembered the item from my dream and noticed it was in my inventory. I smashed open the cage and charged towards the guards. Having fought the guards before, I was getting better at predicting their attacks and the robot guards lasers or the tiger's claws didn't surprise me anymore. They swarmed around me, determined to put me back in my cage and execute me and my friends, but I wasn't going to let them. Urgh, why don't you give up? Because I've got the power of war burning inside of me. Fighting these guards was tough, but with my newly awoken power, I just knew I could beat him. I used everything I could and finally struck him down. Triumphantly, I freed all of my allies. Thank you again for saving us. We're ready to help you fight. As they spoke, I noticed the guard had dropped a map and I quickly picked it up. The title read Master Factory. This must be Fang's whereabouts. It's time to end this. With that declaration, I gathered up my forces so we could head towards our final battle. On day 99, we arrived at the location on the map and found a massive factory waiting for us. There, Fang and his forces were prepared to level the world with their tech. Surrender or face our wrath. I see my gods have failed to dispose of you as I requested. 
It doesn't matter. You're no match for my army. I'm not the same little cub you remember. You're in for a beatdown. Men, charge! We can win this! With a loud shout, our forces charged at each other. It was an all-out war between all of the people I had recruited and Fang's army. The battlefield was in complete chaos. Both sides of the war fought with everything they had, and the air was filled with lasers and bursts of energy. The sheer number of my army, thanks to my newfound allies, was enough to fill me with hope that we might actually win this. The battle was neck and neck. We were actually putting up a good fight against the technology and the evil tigers. How is this possible? They're supposed to crush you! Quickly, Fang fled back into the factory. Oh no you don't! I followed him inside, while my allies continued to take on Fang's forces. On day 100, I found myself finally confronting my brother inside of the factory. It's over, Fang. Stop this madness. Never! I've always been the stronger brother! You're supposed to listen to me! I wouldn't listen to a monster like you. We're both war tigers. Aren't we both supposed to be monsters? You never understood the value of life, and that's what separates you from me. With his eyes full of rage, Fang lunged towards me. Within an instant, the battlefield was ablaze as Fang and I used our most powerful abilities against one another. When I attacked him with fiery punches, he shot back with beams of purple energy, and he used the shadowy power to pull me close to him and strike at me. But I was able to use my strength to get away and continue the fight. Our powers seemed evenly matched, but I couldn't let that stop me. I knew I could overpower him somehow. I could tell Fang's anger was getting the best of him, and I could use that to my advantage. I kept a level head and reminded myself of everything that was at stake. I focused all of my energy on Fang and was finally able to strike him down once and for all. With Fang defeated and his reign of terror concluded, the war was over and the world was saved. Bronzo!